Welcome all of you to this live program, Dr. Principles. Today, our guest of honor is Dr. Bruno Allori from Doha, Qatar. Dr. Allori is a French orthopedic surgeon. For over 15 years, he has cared for professional athletes and high-level sports athletes with low limb pathologies in France and Qatar. He qualified in foot and ankle surgery in 2003 and has furthered his training in Spain in order to practice foot percutaneous surgery. He's also a member of the French Society of Foot and Ankle Surgery, the EFAS, the Tough Court, and ESCA. He played handball at national level during his medical studies, and he's the president of a sports committee of a tennis club with nearly 1,000 licenses with a leading team in the first national division. So today is my great honor to introduce you to Dr. Bruno Lori from Doha, Qatar. Over to you, Dr. Lori. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Gopalan. Uh, it's my pleasure to speak to you about uh, uh, um, a subject uh, which is a, a very passion subject for me, which is a stochondral defect of the talus. Uh, for this uh, presentation, I have uh, no conflict of interest, uh, of course. Um, in reality, um, we, we think that um, uh, osteochondral talar defects are, uh, and talar lesions are more important now, but uh, the, the, the fact is that we are taking much more care of this problem than before. Uh, the incidence of this pathology is uh, 27 cases for uh, 100,000 persons in per year. Uh, we can find these kind of lesions in uh, more than 70% of ankle fractures and more, more of 50% of the patients with an ankle instability will present also uh, an osteochondral lesion of the talus. And the average, the patients uh, who is suffering of about this pathology is uh, 31 years old, is a male in 63% uh, of the cases and in more than 50% of the cases is the right ankle, which is involved in the pathology. Uh, a few words about uh, anatomy uh, to say that tibiotalar joint is a very specific joint. Uh, this is first of all, um, high congruent joint and uh, uh, the repartition of the cartilage is absolutely not homogeneous. As you can see in this image, um, the, the cartilage uh, thickness of uh, the tibia is uh, quite homogeneous, but in the talus, uh, the first third, the anterior third of the joint is more, more thick than the posterior third of the joint. Also a specificity of the ankle is that um, an ankle instability or an ankle fracture will influence a lot. Uh, first, the congruence of the joint, but also uh, the contact pressure and the, uh, on the joint and a different part of the, the, the joint and the cartilage. Um, the fact, of course, that uh, a direct injury can damage the cartilage, but also like in uh, this uh, radiography uh, concerning a professional rugby player who has this uh, um, fibular fracture with a displacement of this fracture and ascension of the distal fibula, and a lost, a complete loss of the congruence uh, of the joint. And of course, he has also a very important uh, syndesmosis hysteria associated with, uh, with this lesion. The third point, uh, very specific to the ankle, is that um, uh, the fluid has an influence on the evolution of a cartilage lesion. When the, the subchondral bone is exposed to the fluid, um, slowly, step by step, this pressure of the fluid with, will, uh, will lead to a sclerosis of um, the bone and then an osteolysis and then a cyst. And this cyst is going to produce, to induce um, more cartilage lesions. And of course, uh, it's a uh, visocyclic. One lesion is going to, to lead to another one and to increase the first one. And this is very important to understand that at the level of the ankle and to understand also the, the importance of uh, treating this kind of lesion, especially when they are symptomatic. This very interesting study from uh, ranking show that um, medial lesions in the area 147 was 
more than 60% of the cases. That lesion was in more than 80% of the cases central in zone four, five, and six. Uh, they show that anterolateral uh, lesion was uh, very often associated with uh, uh, instability of the ankle, which is present in 93% of the cases at least. We observe also that medial lesions, medial tears are much more deeper and much more extended than lateral uh, tears. We know now that um, more than 50% of the lesions are situated in zone four and that 25% of the lesions are in zone six. A special case for uh, ankle lesions that tibial, plat tibial plafond lesions are very rare, 2.6%, and bipolar lesions are even more rare, less than 1% of the cases. We did a, a study uh, published last year uh, concerning this osteochondral lesion of the talus, but our population was a little bit different than the population of rinking. We was uh, speaking about professional football player, and we observed that in 42% of our professional football player, a chondral lesion was present in the MRI of the ankle. Um, of course, we confirm that 70% uh, of ankle fracture are associated with uh, a chondral lesion of the talus, and that in more than 50% of ankle sprains, we have also a cartilage lesion of the talar dome. And in our series, uh, the lesion was much more frequent in anterolateral position than in zone three. The most common uh, mechanism of injury uh, in the general population is like in this tennis player, uh, force virus. And you can completely imagine why in this kind of lesion, you can have a deeper lesion in the medial side than in the later lateral side. The lateral side, um, the most common uh, etiology is ankle instability and chronic instability, especially in uh, this football player with a very small lesion of the talar dome. But in reality, uh, this kind of lesion is very well tolerated by the patient because not symptomatic. And this is why most probably uh, we see them uh, very uh, late in reality with uh, uh, nostochondral cyst uh, in the great majority of the cases. I would like to speak about uh, a very uh, specific uh, lesion, which is the osteochondritis dissecans, because I think we cannot uh, mix an osteochondritis dissecans with a chronic or a traumatic lesion. Osteochondritis dissecans has a, an etiology which is not really uh, um, admit for everyone. Some, some authors think that it's a, a lack of vascularization, other authors think that it's a more degenerative origin. And for other one, and I think I'm more than this one, it's a microtraumatic uh, origin. Uh, the fact is that uh, this kind of lesion is uh, very frequent in uh, young patients uh, around 10 to uh, 12 years old. The average age is uh, 11 years old. And most frequently, uh, it's a woman who is um, uh, the subject of this lesion. The clinical examination is um, in reality poor and not specific to uh, talardom lesions. Uh, we can have some pains in the ankle, sometime with or after weight bearing. We can have pain after sport or during sport activity. Swelling and stiffness can be also a symptom. Um, let's say that uh, the more the lesion is important, the more the symptomatology is um, important. And uh, another, uh, another sign we can have is a clicking on the ankle. If the clicking is painful, maybe it could be a, a flap on the cartilage. A locking uh, joint could be a sign of a loose body. And also the feeling of instability is sometimes a sign of a loose body uh, without any uh, cartil uh, any um, uh, ligament tear. A word about classification. Um, 
and a little bit of history. The first classification was a radiographic uh, classification uh, proposed by uh, Ben and Artie. And even now, in some countries, it's still very, uh, very uh, interesting to, to, to give this classification. The problem is that uh, more than 40% uh, of the lesions of the talar dome will be not seen by radiography. This is why in the 90s, with uh, the happening of the CT scan, uh, Loomer uh, described uh, uh, a fifth uh, stage of the Benenati classification, which was the, the cyst, the subchondral cyst. Today, we are more often uh, using Apple magnetic resonance imaging staging system, which gave uh, the five uh, stages seen in reality with uh, radiography. But uh, uh, we also use the uh, arthroscopic classification uh, because uh, we used to operate these patients for this lesion. Interesting also to speak about another classification, which is the uh, ICRS classification. And um, uh, we can also use this classification to describe our lesions. But in reality, all that classification that you will see that later in my mind are very specific, but maybe not uh, adapted to the treatment we're going to give to the patient. We'll see that later. Speaking about uh, treatment, we can propose to our patient a non-operative treatment. The goal of this non-operative treatment is just to have a pain-free and functional ankle. Of course, the cartilage healing is uh, not very frequent, very occasionally, and we'll speak about one case later on. Immobilization during four to six weeks with non-weight bearing is generally um, the, the goal, the, the proposal to the patient. We can add physiotherapy. We can use, of course, orthopedic sensors. We can propose to the patient to lose, to lose weight if uh, he is uh, overweight. We can use also non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs. And the indication for non-operative treatment is Ben and RT type 1, 2, and small lesion type 3. In reality, um, the more the lesion is small, even if the lesion is very deep, it's, it is not symptomatic because the repartition of the weight on the, on the cartilage is very important. Then a small lesion will be not symptomatic generally. The result of non-operative treatment uh, is quite good because after two years follow-up, we have 86% of uh, pain-free ankles. But in reality, uh, we know that uh, more than 50% of this ankle will evolve to uh, osteoarthritis. The case I wanted to uh, speak to you about is uh, this young patient on the left of the screen. Uh, he is um, a young football player, 12 years old, uh, who come to see us uh, uh, just before the COVID time. And he has a, a, a pain in the ankle after an ankle sprain. And uh, the evolution, evaluation of this ankle sprain leads to find this osteochondral lesion. It was, in my mind, a clear osteochondritis dissecans. And then this boy uh, had a medical treatment, non-operative treatment, because of the COVID especially. And the parents went to see me uh, 18 months after, at the end of the COVID, to, to ask me what we can do with this big lesion, because it was a big lesion. And, okay, I say, maybe we can fix it. Maybe we will see. And then I asked for a new uh, CT scan to see the evolution of the lesion. And uh, here is the result. This boy have a complete but complete healing of the lesion 18 months after the first CT scan. Then this is to say that uh, maybe we should not be very uh, on the hurry when we want to treat a patient, even if the lesion is like that, maybe we need to wait a little bit. The biological treatment like uh, PRP or PMAC, oh, it's a solution. We can have a good result, uh, even if uh, I remember uh, the last communication from uh, Royal Bar who say that uh, there is no um, benefit to do PRP in the ankle. But uh, to be honest, uh, this study was a little bit uh, biased because he was doing only 
two injection. One, uh, the second injection was done. I don't know if it's six weeks after the first one. I don't really understand this uh, study, but okay. Uh, in our practice, we used to to propose uh, uh, PRP injections of PMAC. Uh, of course, you will not have a healing of uh, the cartilage, but you can um, help the patient to have less pains and to continue his career as a professional athlete. The surgical treatment, um, we have uh, several stages of the surgical treatment. Let's say to start with the excision of the fragment, which is the more simple, which is indicated in a case of a small fragments. The results are very good, more than 50% of good results. And if you add a, a curtage or a debridement of the lesion to this excision, you will reach 77 good percent of good result for, of course, Ben and RT, uh, three or four, uh, let's say ICRS uh, uh, two and three. The fixation of the fragment, if it's an acute lesion, if it's a big fragment, if it's enough dipped fragment, then you will uh, uh, liberate the fragment, make a, um, a drilling of the, the, um, the bed of the lesion, and you will fix your fragment with a screw. Uh, it could be a headlet screw, could be also a resorbable pin, resorbable screw, like in this case. Uh, the fact is that the lesion should be more than 100 uh, square millimeters and more than five millimeter depth. The result, 89% of good result. And let's say that it's a very good option. There is, uh, I would like to add just for this uh, case of uh, fixation, there is another technique possible to, if the fragment is really big, to fix the fragment with. Uh, two little osteochondrite plugs, like a mosaic, but very small plugs to fix it. It's a very elegant technique and give also very good results. What about the other treatment? But we can do a, a simple drilling uh, for a, a lesion with a subchondral bone tear and a, not, no lesion in the cartilage yaline. Um, the goal is to partially destroy the, the calcified subchondral plate and uh, to, to lead, um, let's say, uh, the formation of uh, new blood vessels and the, resil the release of uh, growth factors. This inflammatory response will induce a sort of fibrocartilage, which is not, of course, a yaline cartilage, but a fibrocartilage able to cover the lesion and to give enough uh, uh, satisfaction to the patient to uh, return to his uh, activity. Uh, technically, this drilling can be done by uh, transarticular with uh, one or 1 1.2 uh, Kirchner spin, but we can do also sometime a retrograde drilling depending on the lesion of the, the, um, the position of the lesion. The results are uh, good. Uh, with 85% uh, of good result at six months generally. Another uh, surgical technique, which is the gold standard, uh, the microfractures. Alors, microfractures uh, are the gold standard for lesion less than 150 square millimeters. And I would say that even now, less than 100 square millimeter, less than five millimeter depth, let's say, I want to say that uh, the best indication for this kind of lesions are lesion ICRS-3 in reality. Then uh, after removing your uh, cartilage defect, uh, the, the cartilage which is damaged, uh, you will do uh, the, the partial destruction of the calcified area with the microfracturing. With the microfractures, the goal is the same than with uh, a drilling. And uh, after that, you will propose to your patient uh, her remobilization, uh, no weight bearing during six weeks, and the results are good, or very good in 80% of the cases. Another uh, stage in the treatment of this kind of uh, talardome cartilage lesion is the osteochondral chondrocyte, is autologous chondrocyte implantation, AC and MACI after, of course, 
then uh, this kind of uh, surgery is a three, three steps treatment. The first step is the chondrocyte harvesting. The second step in the lab is the, the culture of the cells. And the third step is uh, the second surgical procedure with the implantation of the uh, chondrocyte um, three weeks after the first surgery, uh, covered by our, um, a periosteal flap. We used to do that before. Now we use uh, the membranes uh, like uh, yellow fast, chondroguide, etc. cetera. Uh, and it will give you a good result, close to 80% in reality. Um, Macy is uh, another technique. In reality, the, the lab is going to send you uh, your cells implanted in a membrane, and you will implant directly your membrane instead of putting a membrane on the top. The results are similar. Another technique uh, also with uh, the, the chondrocyte, this is most probably uh, the one I prefer and the one we used to, to practice here in Aspetar. Uh, we collect the cartilage with uh, a system of aspiration like the, the, the graft net. And then uh, we do uh, means cartilage uh, after uh, doing uh, an abrasion of the lesion and uh, cleaning all the area. We create uh, some uh, very um, uh, clear shoulder of the lesion, like you can see in uh, the video. And then after we come to 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 put in the in the bed of the lesion the cartilage we we collected with the uh, with the uh, the shaver and aspiration mixed with a little bit of uh, BMAC or PRP, and we cover it with uh, a membrane like uh, chondroguide or yellow fax. And uh, we put in the in the bottom in the top of all that uh, some uh, biology glue. Uh, the postoperative period is uh, six weeks non weight bearing. We move uh, the ankle uh, relatively soon, and the results are also quite good, with uh, seventy eight percent of good results. For me, the indication of the lesion of this uh, treatment is uh, ICRS grade uh, grade three lesions but very extended, more than 100 uh, square millimeters. Most probably the, the best treatment uh, to have a good result uh, is the, the osteochondral autograph transfer, the odds. Indication are uh, largest uh, lesions. Eventually, if you have a subchondral cyst, uh, this is most probably one of the best solution. Now, the problem is that uh, if the lesion is very extended, if you need more than, let's say, two plugs, then it's uh, not so good because the stability of the plugs is not very good. Then should we do that by arthroscopy, like you see in the, the first image, or uh, by open surgery? But the, the, the fact is that uh, you need to be perpendicular to the lesion. And you can see that in the, in the first image, uh, the plug is not really perpendicular. Okay, the, the evolution was, of the patient was okay, but the plug is not perpendicular. In the second image, in the image of the uh, open surgery, but we did here uh, an open surgery and the plug is perfectly uh, positioned and the evolution of the patient is absolutely perfect. Then uh, the results are uh, very good in uh, more than 85% uh, of uh, the cases. And um, for me, when there is a ICRS grade four lesion, I recommend this kind of treatment. Of course, you can see that uh, we, we, we saw that the great majority of the lesions are central, 80% of the lesions. That that's mean that it's sometimes difficult to reach the lesion, especially when uh, your lesion is central and medial, which is the great majority of the cases. I remember you that it's uh, more than 50% of the cases, and then you will need to do um, a medial uh, malleolus osteotomy. Should we be afraid about an osteotomy? No, absolutely not. You just need to respect some rules. The fixation, you can fix it with a plate and screws, you can fix it with screws only, but at least three screws, like uh, I show you here in this image. Then, to conclude, uh, let's say that uh, 
we need to treat only symptomatic lesions. We need to treat only lesions where the patient is complaining about. If you find by chance or because you are exploring an ankle, a cartilage lesion, but the patient is absolutely no painful, you, not, you should not go to treat this lesion. For me, even if there is a lot of classification, the size of the lesion is the more important. If your lesion is less than 100 square millimeters, less than five millimeters depth, then you need to go for a treatment like AC, MACI, or means cartilage. If the lesion is deeper than five millimeter, if the lesion is more extended than 100 square millimeter, then maybe you need, you need to uh, propose to your patient um, an osteochondral uh, uh, transfer like a nodes. Another thing very important, do not forget to treat associated lesion like an instability. If you, if you operate a patient for an osteoc a symptomatic osteochondral lesion without treating his instability, it's going to be a failure, that's sure. And with that, I would like to thank you on the name of all the Aspetor team and my colleagues. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm sure you have a lot of questions. Thank you, Dr. Alori. Uh, Dr. Alori, you can stop sharing. Yep. Uh, where is it? Yes. yes. Uh, thank you, Dr. Alori, for this very comprehensive presentation. Thank you. And a lot of new insight. Uh, let's have a short question and answer session. Now, Dr. Alori, in your first slide, you said that uh, OLT talus would be as high as 73% of ankle fractures. So do you think the incidence of OLT is slightly higher than that was conventionally thought? Because if it is 73%, it, it would mean that a lot of these were uh, healed on itself, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Alors, two things. They can heal. Some, some of them can heal. And also, as I told you, if the lesion is small, in reality, the symptomatology is not important. But we need to keep that on the mind that, for example, if you have a little lesion one day, maybe you will have a subchondral cyst another day. And this is the case I show you uh, when I show you the, the image of the tennis player and, uh, and uh, in the lower part of the screen, you had this uh, little, very little uh, lesion in uh, zone uh, six. Uh, he is a professional football player, very well known for a professional football player. And this guy was playing with that since years and years. But uh, at the moment, uh, a new MRI has shown that he has a subchondral cyst under the, this lesion. And he wasn't complaining about anything before, except instability. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lori, for that. And uh, Dr. Lori also mentioned ACI, autologous chondrocyte implantation, as one of the treatment possibilities. And what has been your experience in Doha regarding the logistics? For example, in stage one, you harvest and you send it to some place for the culture, right? So how is it done in Doha? Now, uh, we, we, we used, personally, I like to do a lot of uh, means cartilage. More simple, one stage surgery. And uh, yeah, uh, it's more easy. But um, uh, I forgot the name. We, we have now a new system uh, to do uh, uh, an AC in one stage. They come in the world with a portatile uh, laboratory and they, they are able to produce a membrane with chondrocytes immediately. And then we, we start doing that. One of my colleagues is doing that in the knee, especially. Uh, I didn't start for the, the ankle, but uh, he's doing that for the knee. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Dr. Lori. Uh, Dr. Lori, we also joined by Loy. Loy al is an orthopedic and sports surgeon based in Dubai. Lai, welcome to the show. Any questions to Dr. Alori, please? Hi, good evening. Good evening, Dr. Bruno. Good to good see you again. Lloyd. Thanks a lot for this. Yeah, well, good. Uh, thanks for uh, this great presentation. This is the interesting thing. This is the men's cartilage, something new to, so let's say, to the ward or to the surgery. So mm -hmm. if you can give us a highlight, you, you, you use, uh, sorry about that. You use um, uh, the, the harvesting device, let's say. The graft net. Yeah. The graft net, yes, you, I use it, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah the draft man. So you te make, you mix it? Yeah. Yes, yeah, technically, uh, you you use your shaver in one direction only, and not uh, in reverse. So just one direction, yeah. and then you can clean the lesion if if you have cartilage, a little bit of cartilage in your lesion, you can clean it and you can use it. If not, if you don't have cartilage, you can even use a piece of cartilage, which is a loose body, you can use it. And if not, you can use in the ankle, the anterior part of the talus, uh, which is not articular part. You can take cartilage at this part, you aspirate it with the grass net. And then after you mix uh, the, the sort of puree uh, of uh, cartilage you have with a little bit of PRP, okay? Then you put it in the bed of the lesion. Before that, you need to make very straight shoulder of the lesion. It's very important to have a congruence of uh, your cartilage. And then uh, you put your uh, means cartilage in the bed of the lesion. You put a chondroguide on the top. Alors I say chondroguide. You can use also yellow fast. Personally, I prefer Chondrogai because you have a template, and then you template. can you can you can do exactly uh, the, with the template. You are going to 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 have the perfect patch to cover your cartilage and to 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 fit in your lesion. Okay, and after you just take bio glue T seal on the top awesome. of your uh, your membrane. Yeah, I actually do mostly, mostly the same, but I added thrombin to it. And sometimes I added, I'm not sure about this, uh, if this is beneficial or not, or even cost effective. I added uh, hyaluronic acid to the to the mixture and give it like more glue uh, tissues. So I'm gonna, this is helpful, not sure, what's, uh, let's see with the results. But do you think that will give a men's cartilage implantation yes. in CI? Will give a good results uh, even Sorry. in chronic lesions. Would 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 you think that MCI means cartilage implantation give will give us a good results even in a chronic lesion, even with lesions over three to six months? Yes, I think you need to try it, and you will have a good result. But if it's a if it's a traumatic lesion, I'm really speaking about traumatic lesions. Of course, do not try to treat uh, an osteoarthritis of the ankle with this kind of treatment. Of course, you will not have exactly. a good result. That, that's, that's why I'm trying. Yeah, yeah. The take-home message here is to keep a high level of suspicious suspension when you um, when when an injury happens, like a simple ankle sprain, and keep coming to your clinic, keep coming to your clinic with ankle pain. The the you have you still have need you still uh, need to have a low threshold toward an MRI. Because one of the common cause of the persistent ankle pain after ankle sprain is the osteochondral injury. Absolutely. This is one message to our colleague that we can Absolutely. deliver uh, through this. Uh, yeah, fifty percent of ankle sprains have a lesion also in the cartilage. Then uh, yes, we we need to, especially if the if the patient still painful after re after rehabilitation. Maybe you need to to complete a little bit uh, the exploration and look for a, a cartilage lesion. Absolutely, I agree with you. Awesome, thanks a lot. That was amazing, Dr. Bruno. Thank you, and Dr. Dr. Lurie. We'll, we'll yeah, meet thank again, you, Dr. Lurie, for this uh, brilliant presentation. And that's all the questions that we have for this session. And uh, we really look forward for more from your side in future. Thank you very much. To you both, and uh, I hope see you soon in Qatar or uh, in another part. Okay.